If you ever receive a uh, package in the mail and this is the uh, return address, then um, chances are you've uh, been a bidder on an auction and gotten some good stuff. And um, I have. And um, one of the items I bid on was this um, record by Byron G. Harlan. It's uh, on a good old time straw ride. And a uh, pretty good little record. Uh, only trouble was, it sounded like it was uh, playing a little fast on my um, Edison home here. So, um, in order to correct that, you've got to adjust the uh, speed. And there's the uh, speed control knob and the governor. So, um, let's see how... Um, fast it's running. Now on these machines there are uh, marks that you can use for timing the speed of the machine. They are um, one and six tenths of an inch apart. You see there. And so in this case, because this is a Model B home that's con been converted to play 4-minute records, we need to um, switch it back to the 2-minute position, or else we'll have to wait 2 minutes to get a result instead of 1. And then we need to use a clock with a seconds hand. And if you saw the video previous to this one with the uh, nickel-plated alarm clocks, you saw this German-made moth clock. And it's the perfect candidate with that big sweep second hand for um, checking the speed on a phonograph. Now, on Edison machines, the Model B and newer machines will have these marks engraved on the back rod. Now some of the very early Model Bs might not. I know there's some very early um, banner decal standard Model Bs that don't have the uh, engraved marks. But uh, most of them will have. Of course the earlier Model A machines have a um, speed control knob that sticks out on the bed plate. Um, because they were made for playing both the gold molded and the uh, brown wax records and those all run at uh, different speeds usually the um, brown wax records usually run at a slower speed but by the time the Model B and newer machines came out everybody was pretty well using um, either the uh, two minute gold molded cylinders or the later uh, four minute records like this four minute uh, blue amberl. So that's what we're going to um, adjust the uh, machine to uh, play correctly. So what we'll do here is let me zoom in. We'll run the carriage over to the first mark here. Get it right on the mark. And then reinsert the winding crank. Make sure the motor is wound up like it would be for playing a record. It feels pretty good. So we'll take it back out. And, um,. Start the machine. Let it come up to speed. And while well, watching the seconds hand on the clock, we'll try to get this timed right. When it when it gets to the 12, we'll drop this and go. Okay. So now we wait a minute to. Um, see what the result is. We'll be able to see if the machine is running fast or slow. Now, there's 
modern ways you could do this that would render a result much quicker you could use a uh, strobe and um, yeah those are nice when you've got them uh, this is kind of fun though this is the way they would have done it they would have used either a pocket watch or some other kind of timekeeper that they could use uh, on some machines there's a set screw on the main shaft that you can um, Ooh, look at that. We've overshot it, and yeah, we've overshot it quite a bit. Lift it up there. Overshot it that much. So, the machine is definitely running fast. Sometimes what they could do is they could uh, run the machine and then very lightly count the bumps of that set screw running past their finger and um, you know do a little bit of arithmetic there and you'd only take you 15 seconds to um, to um, figure out you know in 15 seconds if the machine's running at 160 rpm you should count 40 bumps um, but we're doing the um, the minute mark test here so this is the governor that controls the speed of the machine and this is the adjusting screw for the speed of the machine and it operates the um, the felt friction pads against the um, the friction disc there the governor disc and basically moving in this direction allows a speed increase and you see there the um, pads move away from the disc so the weights are free to fly out further and pull the disc along with it until it makes contact again with the uh, pad and then to go slower run this way and it forces the disc over to the left forces the weights uh, not to fly out as far and makes a slower speed So we want to adjust this slower. So we'll turn it a little bit like that. Lower the uh, machine back down. Let's check the state of the wind to make sure we're not wound down too far because that'll uh, skew our results. It still feels pretty good. So let's run it back over to the first mark. Right there. And we'll wait for the second hand to get at some convenient spot. Let's make sure the machine is running. Okay. Watch the second hand and drop. Okay. So once again we're running the machine run. Let it run for about a minute. Let's see where we're at. So when the second hand gets to the um, gets to the 12 again we should have passed to the next mark. And we'll either overshoot it or if we went too far uh, slowing it down, we won't make it to the mark. So we'll put our camera there where we can see the mark and we can see the seconds hand. It looks like we're still running fast, aren't we? Yep. So we remove the winding handle. Again, it just unscrews. Raise the machine back up. And turn this to the right some more. 
and we repeat that until we have the machine running at the right speed and when it takes exactly a minute for this carriage to go from this mark to this mark if it does that in exactly one minute we are running at a hundred and sixty revolutions and then um, Billy Murray, Arthur Fields, Ada Jones and um, Golden Hughes and Cullens and Harlan will all sound exactly the way they're supposed to sound not too fast or not too slow so we'll put the crank back in there and make sure our tension is still good and when you let go of the winding handle always make sure that the winding paw catches don't just let it fly out of your hand that's a good way to cause damage let's run the uh, carriage up to the speed mark Turn the machine on, and this time we'll wait for the um, hand to get to the five, uh, to the nine. Before we pass the five to the nine, and go. Okay. Like I said, there's more modern ways to do this. I've got all these uh, fluorescent lamps here lighting my uh, my desk here, so they'd be um, they'd be perfect for illuminating a strobe. They're not um, they're not electronic. They're just old um, um, choke coil ballasts, so they would produce a nice 60 cycle flicker for a strobe. But um, not having a uh, strobe printed off for a cylinder machine. This is uh, this is a satisfactory method. This is the way they would have done it. Um, it's not too bad. Ooh, still just a little fast. I gotta take the crank out first. So that is the way you adjust the. Uh, um, speed on this and I don't know if I'm going to get the speed adjusted in time before I run out of uh, memory on this camera I've got I started making this video I had 14 minutes left and uh, we're already at, at um, almost 13 so I, don't know, I just put the record on you can hear a little bit of uh, Harlan on the uh ride that's a uh, that was pretty close there sometimes a good idea to shift this when it's running so uh, looks like we're pretty close I would say on the speed I'll take some more time to fine tune it here but go ahead and play us off definitely still running fast so got some more adjusting to do but that's how you would do it so from Oklahoma bridges here in Morrison Oklahoma thank you for watching <laughs>